Today, I would like to show you how to make a matching band with the B setting. Are you ready? Let's get started. We're going to starting with the ring is ready made here. If you haven't made this ring, you may want to watch the video that I have the link on the right top corner. So to making a matching band, we are going to draw a circle starting from the zero. And you don't want a circle to be too big because it's going to tuck underneath it. I'm going to disable my all snap so I don't snapping anything. They will be flat and I'm going to draw a circle roughly like this. After that, I'm going to draw a straight line across the entire ring, something like this. And depends on how close you want to get them into. So then this is what we get there. That's just simply just trim each other. We don't need this area over there and join them together. You don't want it to have that much of the kink there. So that's using the uh, fitted curve and we want to have a big fitted. Let's try two millimeter and we want to fit it in between here and here. So then we will have this curve. Let's bring back the ring that we have. Let's bring back the ring size that we have. So we will have something like that. We want to use the command curve from two views to select this one and that one. And we don't need to actually need the bottom one. So let's trim this off over here. So we want to use the, uh, we want to creating the cross section. Again, we want to use the conic corners. And that's uh, snapping into this endpoint and for one and a half millimeter by one and a half millimeter and hit enter. I simply just want to moving that piece from this endpoint to this endpoint and simply just mirror to the other side. Before we give it a try, I also wanted to rotate the cross section 90 degree up. And make sure copy equal yes on your option. And make sure that you move this one to the side. This is really important because it's going to help you the surface facing correctly on the top. So let's give it a try. We want to use the sweep one rail. This is the rail cross section one, two, and three. And we want to move the seam to inside of the ring shank. And make sure you want the recorded history. So this is what we get. Now, if you feel like this is not what you like cross section wise, you can always change in the shape if you want to. And if that look all right to you, we are going to use the sweep one rail one more time. This one, we want to pick up the circle cross section here and cross section there. And make sure you move the seam to inside of the ring shank to line up there. So we will get this bottom right here. Now it's the time for the stone setting. We would like to extract the ISO curve. And I want to extract from this surface. And I'm going to extract the curve over there. We want to turn it back to the ring that we have and see if they fit really nicely. I'm going to join this first. It said you will break the history, but since we no longer going to change it, I need to move my ring out just a little bit. So it's not touching my solitary ring. And if that works nice to you, we are going to work with the stone. We do not want a stone is too long over there compared to the solitary. It's always nice when you have them aligned. So I'm going to draw a curve starting from the zero. Simply just see where the stone is going to stop right there. And that's mirror that piece going to the other side. We're going to use those two curves to trim the curve that we just extract ISO curve on both sides. So now this piece is getting shorter. We no longer need those two curves. Let's go ahead to delete them. So I'm going to bring in the stone is roughly about 1.3 millimeter. And I'm also going to work on my prong first. So let's go ahead. Coming into the front view, I'm going to draw a straight line somewhere from here to here. And simply we're just going to pipe it into about this size. 
and I'm going to moving this one somewhere like this. If you feel like this is too small of a size, you can always increase it something like this. We then want to mirror that to the other side to be something like that. And they will be a group. After we got our stone set it up, we want to know the length of the curve that we have there. So let's pick up the curve that we have, type it the command length. It show is 27.373. So let's go to copy that and draw a straight line right here for exactly the same length. Then I want to move in that part, maybe want to group it first and we'll align with this right in the middle. I also want to align to the left. So then that will align over here. Let's give it a try. I would like to have them to use the linear array and guessing about 20 of them and go something like that. Make sure prong want to cut equal size on both of them and we'll get something like this. Make sure that if this is too many, you want to delete some of them. So I'm going to move down the curve and jump, then group it all of this and putting those two back together align with the center so then that will be equally on both sides. Now I want to ungroup this one. Make sure they are on the same level. I'm going to bring up this curve over here and make sure the curve is sitting where just under the girdle. We're going to use the flow along curve and that will be our object. The base curve is here. The target curve is this curve on the surface. So they will flow nicely on the top of the ring shank. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanted to learn more about Rhino 3D software and how to transfer a 2D image into 3D model, I have a free webinar to show you six different ways to transfer the 2D image into 3D model. The link is in the description below. It's completely free. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.